15. Oh, we got a bunch biopsy here, and the eye is drawn to the superficial dermis where we see little tufts or collections, lobules of something. Uh, context clues and the histology would point to a vascular proliferation as most likely, and I think that checks out uh, small little aggregations of vessels, maybe a little bit of homogenization of the kind of superficial collagen, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of compact scale, looking for hemosiderin or red blood cell extravasation. I'm not sure I see it. Not, not a lot. It's probably some hemosiderin in here, but I agree I'm, it's not catching my eye at first glance. There may be a few red cells, but just a few. There's probably a little hemosiderin right there. Yeah. Maybe right here. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, it looks like what we see on a lot of our biopsies from the lower legs, just stasis changes. Yeah, right. And I like your point of, oh, there's some hemosiderin. Stasis change, like uh, this doesn't necessarily mean stasis dermatitis, right? I know you know that. I'm saying it for our viewers at home that a lot of times that's just an incidental finding. It's useful because it tells us, A, we're dealing with the leg, and the person is, is certainly, I would say, an adult, and, and potentially an older adult. You tend to get more stasis as you get older just because gravity's had more time to, to fight against your blood vessels and make venous uh, backflow pressure, which creates these little clusters and lobules of thick-walled capillaries, often with background fibrosis of the superficial dermis, uh, sometimes with a lot of blood and hemosiderin, other times not as much, sometimes with a lot of inflammation. And then you can have a variety of, of reactive changes over it. I'd say the we always uh, talk with the fellows and I about like the, the lower leg is not a happy place for anything to live. The skin is the skin of the anterior lower leg is not normal in, in older adults, almost never. There's almost always stasis change, various reactive epidermal changes. You may have a overlying spongiotic dermatitis, in which case it could be true stasis, stasis dermatitis, but also it could just be contact dermatitis superimposed on their pre-existing stasis. So it, it's oftentimes I'll list out if I see in this, we don't have much epidermal change, except maybe there could be a touch of like, you know, burned out interface here. I'm not sure. But uh, usually <clears throat> I'll say, oh, there's spongiotic dermatitis, there's stasis vascular changes, maybe there's some interface change. I feel like I often see those three things together on the lower leg of adults. And it's hard to know which one's the primary thing and which one's incidental. And so I give a comment to that regard. I'm not sure which is the primary thing. Also, sometimes I see single areas in people that have stasis. One area gets more stasis than the rest. It clinically looks like a red papule or plaque, and it gets biopsy because the dermatologist wants to make sure it's not a basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. And I don't know why sometimes certain areas stand out with more abundant stasis than others. Not sure, but it, but it happens. And when it's real severe and you get a lot of fibrosis in the background and a lot of hemorrhage, stasis can sometimes mimic <clears throat> Kaposi sarcoma clinically and pathologic. So it's been called pseudo Kaposi or acroangiodermatitis. And in those cases, an HHV8 can easily solve the problem. But stasis vascular change, a really important thing to recognize because it's so common and, um, and is important a clue in a lot of ways. Good job.